Hi, I'm Sal McCagalana. I'm Associate Professor of History at Campbell University in North Carolina. I am an adjunct professor of maritime industry policy at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy and a former merchant mariner. Welcome to our 11th issue of What's Going On in the Suez, and it's happened again. Well, almost. Uh, there was an incident this morning in the Suez, matter of fact, almost in the same exact spot MV uh, Evergiven got its problem, but we had an incident take place this morning. So let's go take a look at it here. So this is from the guys at uh, Marine Trans uh, Traffic. Uh, always a great job. If you don't have this app on your phone or your computer, seriously, you need to download it right now. Uh, it is, I have it with me all the time. Uh, I travel a lot. Uh, one of my favorite jobs I do over the summertime is a guest lecturer on board uh, cruise ships. And one of my favorite things to do is to be able to highlight what ships are around me. I mean, I, I could cheat real quick. I look like a genius all the time because I know exactly what vessels are and who they are and size and dimensions. And, and uh, again, uh, I am only as smart as the information I have access to and the guys at Marine Traffic do a great job with this. Anyway, this is the northbound convoy, the tail end of the northbound convoy this morning in the Suez. This is... Uh, uh, Little Bitter Lake right up here, uh, just below the Great Bitter Lake. Uh, Ever Given is way up here off the top of the uh, chart right here. And what you're going to see here is vessels coming in. Let me go ahead and play this for you. Green ships are cargo ships, usually uh, uh, usually container vessels uh, coming in. Uh, not unusual, by the way, for uh, there's an order in the convoys that go in the Suez Canal. Typically, military get to go first because they cheat. They go to the head of the line. So the Navy goes always the front. Uh, but then you usually have uh, cargo ships. Sometimes the car carriers, the big, huge sail area vessels will go first. Uh, then the other cargo ships will go. And then you have the tankers come up the rear. Uh, not always. You'll see there's a mix up here. There's a, 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 a ship that's kind of mixed in with the tankers. That happens sometimes if ships can't get underway or they miss their spot in the convoy coming up. Uh, here you see a big CM, CM, CGM vessel coming up. Uh, several of them are coming up right here. And then right here, uh, this red vessel right here, first tanker here, this is the Rumford and then Minerva Nike, Nike right behind them. So these two vessels are coming up. And one of the things you're going to see is an issue here on the Rumford. Uh, she is going to lose propulsion and basically stop. Uh, the issue you have is when you stop in the canal, everyone behind you has to stop. We talked about this with Evergiven. The fact that the Maersk Denver, the vessel just astern of Evergiven, was able to not just stop, but stay in the channel, uh, keep her position fairly well uh, without T-boning Ever Given. Uh, I doubt she would have. She would have put herself on the beach before she ran into Ever Given because that would have been catastrophic had that happened. But at the same time, the vessel just astern of uh, Maris Denver, the uh, Asia Ruby 3, had a propulsion issue, lost her plant, and almost went in, although I can't get confirmation whether she hit Maris Denver or not. Uh, but Asia Ruby is still sitting there at the anchorage south of Suez right now. Uh, undergoing repairs. So anyway, this is what unfolded this morning. So here's the Rumford heading up. You'll see her, you see Minerva's star start to slow down. She's probably got word from Rumford that there's an issue on board. One of the things that the pilots would immediately do is if they, if they encounter a problem would alert the vessels behind them. Uh, so they would call the ships behind them, tell them, Hey, we got a problem, you know, start, you know, you know, start your process of st stopping. And again, these are vessels, they're not cars, There's no brakes on these things. You just don't, you know, put the brake on. Uh, you have to be very careful in how you stop a vessel. If you just stop spinning the prop, let the prop free spin, for example, you're going to keep your way on, you're going to slow down gradually, but it also gives you helm control because there's water moving past the rudder. If, however, you slam the propeller astern, you start cavitating, you create bubbles around the prop, you also create, create bubbles around the rudder, and that means you lose control. It looks like Minerva Nike went ahead and went astern because one of the things you'll start seeing is she starts fishtailing her stern kicks out to the right a little bit she's trying to stop she doesn't know the situation on rumford obviously she doesn't know how fast rumford is going to stop but she seems to stop very quickly uh the sakura again one of those container ships that's kind of out of place here is right on minerva nike's stern usually you want to keep a mile distance between them these guys were sailing at about nine knots remember ever given was doing 13 knots uh doesn't sound like a lot more four knots but in, in terms of vessel tonnage and, and speed, that's, that's orders of magnitude difference. 
So you'll see here, Minerva Nike goes, all of a sudden Rumford stops, Sakura has to stop, barely stops in time, and you stop this whole chain of vessels right there behind them. Uh, they all basically hold position. Now, one of the things that's very difficult to do is when you stop in the canal is maintain your position. Uh, a lot of these vessels have bow thrusters on them. Uh, you typically have a bow thruster, you don't have a stern thruster. Uh, the reason for that is uh, the propeller, you can use a propeller with the rudder to kind of get your stern to move. Bow is kind of hard to move. Uh, at slow speeds, less than three knots, the bow, rudder, uh, the bow thruster works. And so you can try to maintain your position. Not all vessels have bow thrusters, however. And also, uh, a lot of these controls are manual controls. They're not dynamic positioning systems. So if you've ever seen the movie Deepwater Horizon, uh, the Deepwater Horizon was an offshore oil drilling platform. It had a dynamic positioning system. In other words, it had basically a GPS hooked into the thrusters to keep it within an exact position so it can maintain that. Modern cruise ships have a fairly modern positioning system that allows them to flip controls to a joystick so that they can maneuver the vessel with just the joystick. They don't have to individually move the prop and, and thrusters. You move the joystick sideways, the ship moves sideways. It sends through a computer all the thrusts necessary to move the vessel and turn uh, the rudder and, and, and uh, some vessels have azipods, which means the propeller actually spins 360 degrees. Uh, it's, on a, it's on a swivel and moves around. Some of them have variable pitch props, so you can move the variable pitch, uh, but a lot of vessels don't. And, and so one of the things you see here are these vessels having to kind of hang too. Uh, so they're going to sit here for about two hours, it, it appears, and then get underway again. And so uh, doesn't appear to be any damage at all. Let me flip over here and kind of get you going here on this one here. So these are some screenshots I took of the events as they unfolded. Uh, here's Rumford uh, basically stopped. Uh, this is the track line from marine traffic. Uh, you see her basically stopped right there. Uh, this was her coming up the canal right here. She was right about here. You see this orange spot right here? This is the Little Bitter Lake. This is the Great Bitter Lake right here. You'll see her right there. The little orange spot there shows speed. And when you zoom in there, you see uh, uh, much more of it right here. Let's go uh, down here a little further. This is Minerva, Nike coming in to the lake right there. Uh, again, you see that little spot where she did. Uh, Ever Given was way down here, down here, the far southern part of the canal. This is Minerva Nike, a uh, crude oil tanker uh, that was coming in. Let's go down here. I caught all the vessels as they came in and took some snapshots. So this is Sakura. Uh, this is the bulk carrier that was in that column like that. Uh, she, uh, she's not a car container ship. She's a bulk carrier. So uh, she was right there behind it. You'll see her right there on that track line coming in. This is, let's see who this is here. Uh, I apologize. Eyes aren't what they used to be. Uh, Malala, uh, Malala Ras Lafuna, which is basically, I think she's an LNG carrier. You see her right there coming in. Let's see, let's go back over here. Here's the gas log Skagen. Also had to stop. You'll notice how close they get along the bank. And again, AIS is not always the most accurate when this uh, is, is done. Uh, we don't always see them doing uh, the best right here. Alcohara is an LNG carrier, liquef liquefied natural gas carrier. You want to talk about the vessels that are most dangerous at all times on the high seas. It's these things right here. Liquefied natural gas. This is compressed gas turned into liquid. Uh, each of these things are tanks here, large, massive tanks. Anytime these vessels are involved in anything, you want to be worried about it. Uh, she's sitting there anchored, not anchored, but uh, kind of drifting around there in the middle of the canal. And then let's see uh, what else we got here. Alcatar, also another LNG carrier right there. Same thing. They all stopped right around the same time uh, in the canal. And they were able to get underway. Uh, you'll see that they, they, they were able to clear the canal. Eventually, it was about two hours. Uh, they had to wait. Uh, we saw that the uh, first vessel there, the Rumford, was anchored. She was able to anchor there. Ever Given is up here. Here's Rumford right here, that red uh, diamond right there. This is uh, uh, Minerva Nike right there heading past her. And we're able to clear the channel there. And this is another video here. Let me see if I can get this up here from uh, the guys at uh, 
I'm not sure I can get this up here or not. This is a GIF they did. Let's see if I can get this up here. There we go. Let's see. Not sure I'm going to be able to get this one up here. No. This is showing you the convoy go through here. And one of the things you see here is, is that maneuver, all the green vessels and the red ones, and everything stops there uh, real quick. Uh, I would get onto the marine traffic site. If you want to take a look, they're always updating this and putting information out. It seems as if it was a propulsion plant engine issue. We're not sure exactly what's going on. One of the sub themes going on in, in, in maritime shipping right now is issues with the new fuel. Since January 1st, 2020, vessels have been using this new low sulfur diesel fuel. Uh, this has been part of what's called IMO 2020. This is the International Maritime Organization's new rule for cutting down sulfur emissions in the atmosphere. So they've shipped over to this low sulfur diesel fuel and it's had problems in some vessels. We've had in instances of vessels losing power. I am not sure that's what happened here in Dumford. Don't quote me on this, I'm not sure. It's a potential for that to be the issue. Uh, they could have had just a regular mechanical issue, could have been who knows what. But uh, we have been seeing that a lot. Also, I will mention that the Suez Canal Authority has been pushing vessels through the canal at a very high rate. They're trying to clear the vessels out of the canal. Uh, if we go over to marine traffic, which I'll do right now, if you head on over to marine traffic, one of the things uh, you'll see is there's still a bit of a backlog, uh, especially on the north end of the canal right now. Uh, the north end of the canal has not cleared uh, the backlog yet. They're, they're still trying to get vessels out uh, and uh, basically clear the canal. So they're, they're taking their time basically to get it done. Uh, they've announced that they've cleared the backlog. Uh, I, I think that's uh, optimistic. Uh, I, I think they still have vessels there. Uh, but you have to remember that the uh, canal has limited uh, uh, resources. You'll see the, the southbound convoy uh, is, is heading out now, led by the Ukul uh, Malaysia, one of these big uh, container vessels right here. See it right there, that's part of the Costco fleet. Uh, Ukul was taken over by Costco. This, that's a Chinese overseas shipping company. Uh, and uh, they are all heading out. Meanwhile, uh, the vessels that were in the south, uh, the northbound convoy, that should be Minerva Nike right there, probably. Let's see if I can get a, a kick up here. Hmm. Let's see if she wants a kick up here. Zoom in here a little bit. Yep, there's Minerva Nike. She's heading uh, northbound right now. She's crude oil tanker heading up. Here are the rest of them uh, coming in right now. Talked about the uh, oil tankers. You'll see right here the dual lane kicking in. Kick that up for you right there. There's that nice dual lane right there. North of the lake, seeing it being used. Yep, there's gas log Skagen going in. Here's all the rest of them coming in. And then over here, we should have, let's see, there's the Rumford. She's up and underway now. Uh, she's showing speed, a little over a knot, uh, probably just upping anchor right now. This should be the last, the Cos Coso, so that should be the last of the southbound convoy right there. So they'll pass each other in the lake, heading northbound. Again, not an uncommon occurrence in the canal for this to happen, uh, for a vessel to happen. But again, we see it happen again in that, in that one section there of the southbound uh, uh, southbound area of the canal where there's only that one lane and that's that section right here where we see it happen there's also another area in the northern part of the, of the canal where there's just one lane it's right here uh, so the canal is not two ways all the way this section right here uh, does not have from where the v-split happens all the way down to the beginning right here uh, that is also a one lane section not as narrow as the southern section but Still, it's a it's a one lane section. So the canal is clearing. Again, this is the anchorage north of uh, Suez right now. Uh, typically, uh, they run uh, on average last year, uh, 51 vessels run through the canal uh, on average. That's about 25 each way. Uh, you'll see they have about two days worth of vessels right there. They need to clear. And of course, if you zoom out here, you see vessels coming in here, uh, all heading in here coming in uh, right here. They're all inbound right now at the time, coming into the canal uh, and they'll be heading here. And then on the south end of the canal, the south end is actually a lot clearer than it was. So the anchorage still is, is cluttered. See a lot of vessels right there. Again, probably about a two day passage because again, coming up from the Red Sea, if you zoom out here, you'll see the line 
trucking up the Red Sea right now. All the way from the Bab El Mandab uh, coming up. Uh, so you see that traffic coming in right now. And you see that. And if you get an opportunity, again, uh, you know, zoom out on marine traffic, you get a good idea of where major shipping routes are, where choke points are. We'll do a whole discussion about this. I got a recommendation about that. So, you know, here's Straits of Hormuz, Bab El Mandab. Here's the Malacca Straits, Singapore Straits, South China Sea. This is the Luzon Straits. Don't talk about that enough, but between uh, Northern Philippines, Taiwan, and China, uh, a, a big shipping strait right there, Lombok Straits over here, uh, the Cape route, which is massive. Uh, people don't realize the Cape is uh, Cape Good Hope. A lot of vessels go around the Cape. Uh, the Over here, over to the River Plot area right here in Brazil, a lot of ore come out here. Uh, you still have vessels use the Drake Passage, uh, South China Sea, for example. And then, of course, the one big route that we've started talking about a little bit about here because of the Suez Canal is the, the North, North Russia route, uh, the, the Northeast Passage, North of Russia, the Northwest Passage here for Alaska. Again, in summertime, you'll see this route being used. Uh, not a lot of transmission from vessels over here, but a potential for it. And then the other place we, we hadn't mentioned probably should mention because it, it, it is also of, of, of high value is the Panama Canal, which is over here. But anyway, I want to put a quick video together, talk about what happened in the Suez this morning uh, and get it out there. Uh, a lot of information about it. Uh, talked to a few news agencies already about it. Uh, not critical, but again, uh, ever present danger for disrupting trade. Fortunately, Dumford was not a huge vessel. Uh, she is not the scope and scale of ever given should she have gotten stuck in the canal as as is a potential right there you know real quick to see uh where is she at she's in here in the canal Let's zoom in here real quick her size and and dimensions are a lot different than that let's see if she should be right here yeah rumford there he is rumford i said dumford sorry rumford rumford italian flag crude oil carrier right there uh you can see this the, the stats on her let's pull up a little more there on her stats. Again, you can drill in a lot of information uh, on marine traffic. So you can find out all this kind of detail about her and everything like that, where she's built, uh, where she's from and everything like that. 107,000 deadweight tons. Again, ever given was, was, was twice that. So you start seeing all that. So uh, length uh, about 243.8 meters, whereas ever given was 400 meters. So uh, not as big, not as big. Anyway, that's it. Uh, hope you stay tuned. Uh, I appreciate everyone's in, uh, insight and questions. Uh, again, I got some great recommendations for how to continue with this. Uh, uh, just because Ever Given may be declining as a story, uh, I'm not going to decline with my interest in this. Some people were talking about the fact that I waned off. I apologize. Uh, holiday weekend here in the United States. Uh, plus, uh, I'm actually writing a few pieces about the Ever Given. So I had to do some work on that. So I was asked to write a few pieces on it. So I've been trying to, to do some uh, uh, work that way. So anyway, appreciate it. Stay tuned for more.